Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 25 before going ahead with part 26. Study another important property of fluids that is called viscosity. Viscosity is the property of a fluid that resists the force tending to cause the fluid to flow. So viscosity is nothing but it is very much analogous to what we study in friction. It basically opposes motion. So viscosity always tries to oppose the motion of a fluid. It is a property of a fluid which resists the force. Like suppose if you apply a force to make a fluid move. Viscosity is that property which will always try to oppose that force or resist that force which is causing the fluid to flow. It is analogous to friction in solids. So we can say that viscosity is nothing but fluid friction. Now if you take the example of water placed water kept in a glass and in another glass you take some honey. Now you try to pour down the water as well as you try to pour down the honey. Did you observe any difference? Yes, you must be observing a difference. When you try to pour the water from the glass, the water falls down very rapidly. Whereas when you try to pour the honey from the same glass, it is seen that the honey falls very gradually and it doesn't fall down as rapidly as water. That is because this honey is more viscous when compared to water. Therefore, in order to make the honey move, you need to apply a greater amount of force because honey has a property of resisting the motion, resisting motion. That is, honey has an inherent property which doesn't want honey to move. As a result, it needs some extra effort from our end to make it move. So viscosity comes into play when there is a relative motion between layers of the fluid. As I already told you, whenever fluids move, motion of a fluid is governed by the motion of the different fluid particles and also by different layers of the fluid. So when there is a relative motion between layers of the fluid, that means the layers of the fluid do not move together. When the different layers move at a different pace, there is a relative motion between the layers of the fluid and at that point of time viscosity comes into picture. Now what is coefficient of viscosity? Coefficient of viscosity measures the degree to which a fluid resists flow under an applied force. That means it basically measures how much resistance does a fluid have to its motion. It is defined as the ratio of shearing stress to the strain rate. We already discussed what is shearing stress and what is strain. So when we talk of coefficient, as I told you, viscosity comes into play when there is a relative motion between the layers of the fluid. So when we say that there is a motion between the layers of the fluid, the stress which comes into picture is the shearing stress. So coefficient of viscosity is ratio of shearing stress to the strain rate. It is generally denoted by eta. Now let us suppose in time delta t. In time delta t, the displacement that takes place in a fluid is delta x. Therefore, what would be the shearing strain? Shearing strain would be equal to the displacement which takes place that is delta x divided by the length I mean the original length or the original displacement so the shearing strain would be delta x by n now what would be the strain rate the strain rate would be nothing but delta x by l into t because whenever we talk of rate it is with respect to time. So strain rate would be strain with respect to time. Therefore, what is eta coefficient of viscosity would be shearing stress that is shearing stress divided by strain rate. 
So we can write shearing stress as force per unit area as we know stress is always force per unit area and strain rate is delta x divided by L to T. So this comes out to be F into L divided by delta x by T into A. Now what is this? Displacement per unit time is nothing but velocity. So we can write it as F into L divided by V into A. So this is the coefficient of viscosity. So this is the expression for coefficient of viscosity. Shearing stress by strain rate which comes out to be F into L divided by V into A. SI unit of coefficient of viscosity is Poiseuille or Pascal second or Newton second per meter square. Now you can derive these units very easily. Poiseuille is the only new unit which is named after the scientist. The other unit is Pascal second. So what is Pascal? Pascal is the unit of stress. So here you can see using this you can say that the unit for stress is Pascal and the unit for strain is nothing. Strain doesn't have unit. Since it has strain rate, so there is a second that comes into play. So it becomes Pascal second. Similarly, instead of Pascal, we can write it as Newton per meter square second. So this is Newton per meter square second. Dimension. The dimension would be m l to the power minus 1, t to the power minus 1. How do we get that? Let us try to find out the dimension. What is the dimension for shearing stress? That is force per unit area. Now, what is force? Force is nothing but mass into acceleration. So, we can say force per unit area divided by strain rate. Now, what is force? Force is mass into acceleration divided by area. Strain does not have any dimension. So, strain rate, the rate is per unit time. So, that time comes here. So, we can write mass is m, acceleration is l, t to the power minus 2 into this time is t and this divided by area that is l square. So, this becomes m, l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 1. So this becomes the dimension for coefficient of viscosity. Now let us learn about Stokes law. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.